Yo, it's Bog. Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Today, we're launching an interstellar vehicle to a whole nother star system. It's a red dwarf star called Aethera, and we're going to be landing on one of its planets, which is like a lava lake planet called Surther. And we're going to be visiting the other planets in this star system too in future episodes as part of a new series called Kerbal Star Frontiers. So, this is the interstellar vehicle that I've designed for this mission using some far future type part mods. I'm calling it the KSS Bova after one of my favorite science fiction authors and I'll give you guys a rundown of some of the features real quick so first we have this centrifuge we spin that up to give our Kerbals a feeling of gravity and in the front we have this particle shield that protects all of our landers that we're carrying with us because we're going to be exploring the entire star system with this vehicle and other than that, there are these habitation modules like a storm shelter, a hydroponics module, our command center, as well as some cargo containers. And then we have our main fuel tanks, which are these LH2 fuel tanks and our antimatter fuel tank. The way this works is we convert LH2 into antimatter using this uh, Nova antimatter production facility, which is basically like a giant particle accelerator. With the electricity generated by this fusion and fission reactor, we can generate antimatter in flight, and the engines combine the LH2 with the antimatter to annihilate the particles, which gives us a really powerful form of antimatter propulsion. To get this giant spacecraft into orbit, we have these liquid fuel boosters on the side, and it's not quite enough to get it into orbit around Kerbin. But in a previous episode, we flew a space shuttle out to the Mun to crew up a Mun spaceport that we built inside of a crater on the Mun. It has its own launch sites and vehicle construction facilities. It has its own VAB, launch pads, and launch sites. And for the past couple months, the crew of the Mun spaceport have been constructing the ISV on site, where it now stands by ready to launch. All right, we have main engine start. And one of the main reasons that we constructed and launched the ISV from this spaceport on the Mun is that because of the Mun's lower gravity, it's much easier, takes much less delta V and uh, thrust to weight ratio to get this giant spacecraft into orbit, where we can begin our more interstellar focused uh, burns. But we gotta get off the ground first. And so that's what we're doing right now. We're just on our way to a high orbit around the Mun where these antimatter engines won't hurt anyone hopefully and we're coasting up now to our apoapsis with a beautiful view of the mun surface and kerbin behind us i'm really happy with how that mun spaceport turned out and i'm excited to be able to use it for more isvs in the future and we're now in orbit around the mun so we'll detach those launch boosters and ignite our antimatter engines for the first time to get out of the way where we can deploy our centrifuge once the centrifuge is operational it can be spun up to give our crew a feeling of gravity which will be really beneficial for the crew while we're not under acceleration to maintain their health and experience while on this multi-year journey through deep space. And before we embark with our burn out to Aethera, I wanted to give you guys a tour of the interior of the spacecraft using the mod Free IVA, which allows you to traverse the interior of these spacecraft parts. Anyways, this is the bridge where all of the control, mission control centers are. Through this hatch, we have our hydroponics slash aquaponics. This is where we uh, make all of our food. Um, we've got some plants growing on some wind uh, behind some windows on the outside. And this is the solar storm shelter where we can shelter in place from any sort of high radioactive activity. Uh, this is some of our workstations, some pretty cool screens and servers over here. And yeah, there's just some other offices around here with some cool views from the window. I think you can see the MUN from over here. Very nice. Anyways, onward we go through this hatch. Oh wait, that's the wrong way. Down here is our science tower. We've got some of our Kerbals in here already. And this is kind of the forward most you can get in the ship so we'll backtrack our steps back through the hydroponics module and the bridge and through this hatch here are more crew quarters and these are for while under acceleration because the acceleration of the spacecraft itself will give you kind of a feeling of gravity that'll be more comfortable while under drift we'll use the centrifuge um, and so here's some more uh, offices through this hatch we'll finally get to the centrifuge uh, it's got three access corridors and so we'll just kind of try to get in there and press control i believe you'll latch onto one of these ladders down the access tube and uh, yeah you can open up these hatches down here we have a feeling of gravity finally which is really cool this is like one of our systems terminals some really cool views of the centrifuge spinning from the inside and through this hatch we'll find our first kind of room this is one of our kitchens and oh that's a really cool view of the spacecraft through this window 
and uh, yeah so all of these rooms have a top level and a bottom level which houses our quarters for under zero G so because the craft will be traveling at zero G for parts of the journey uh, the crew will sleep in these quarters because the ring is under spin it will give that feeling of gravity here's another room for servers or maybe like a utility module this is some storage through this hatch we have a computer station terminal looks like they're playing a game there got some cool travel posters and underneath each of these top levels in the ring are more crew quarters and so we've walked through about a third of the ring's circumference i guess passing another access tube through this hatch are even more rooms so we've got a gym which you know we've got weights treadmills mats for like yoga i guess kerbals do yoga that'll be great some labs we have like three labs i think this is just the first one this is the second lab we've got some laser experiments that are pretty cool and looks like we're growing potatoes or something in here and that gym module and the three labs make up another third of the ring circumference. We've just passed the second access tube and onto the last third of the ring. Through here, we've got another kitchen. We are, it's really similar to the last one. And we have our main conference room. So this is kind of, I don't know, where we talk about the mission, uh, do mission briefs and that sort of thing. Through here, we've got another storage module and another computer terminal, very similar to the one that we already passed through. And we're back kind of around the ring all the way around so we can climb back up this ladder and yeah that's basically the entire interior of the spacecraft it's the biggest one that I've ever built on this channel I guess square footage wise on the inside for our crew so now in the map view we can zoom out and actually set Aethera as our target so Aethera is added by the Kerbal Star Systems 2 mod it's over here I've just set it as my target and yeah, like I said, Aethera, it's a M-type red dwarf star system about two and a half Kerbal light years away. And to reach Aethera, we'll just point directly at the target on our nav ball and start our burn. And since these engines are insanely efficient and powerful, they can burn for days, maybe even weeks, months on end if need be, just depending on how much fuel and antimatter we have. So we're going to be accelerating up to a significant fraction of the speed of light to be able to reach Aethera in a somewhat reasonable time frame and so Kerbal light years is kind of a scale that a lot of planet packs use it's like a 1 one hundredth of a real light year and distance scale which makes sense because KSP itself is a scaled down version of our own solar system in a rough sense and I don't know exactly how to calculate my speed in terms of Kerbal light speed or something like that but essentially our time in flight out to Aethera will take about 10 years in flight time which if we're if Aethera is 2.55 Kerbal light years away that means that we're going to be traveling at about a quarter of the speed of light on average in this Kerbal scaled down version of calculating distance and speed and while I've been explaining, we've been rapidly accelerating up to our cruising speed, which will be about 2.8 to 3 million meters per second on a trajectory to the Aethera system. These burns are taking multiple days or even weeks at a time, so I'm using the mod Persistent Thrust to allow acceleration under non-physics time warp to reach these extreme speeds under long duration burns. And we've expended about a fourth of our liquid hydrogen fuel, which we also use to make antimatter, which is another half of our fuel. But we can only spend about a quarter of our fuel. And so we've just been coasting for the past couple years out to Aethera. And on approach, we need to use another quarter of our fuel to slow down um, to capture around Aethera. But first, we're doing a course correction burn, kind of like radial in to adjust our flyby through the system. And we've gotten our first look at it. We're aiming for one of the closer planets. So I'm aiming through the center of the system. And about 12 days out from our closest approach to Aethera, we're beginning our deceleration burn. And uh, once we've burned off all of our speed, we should end up in a roughly circular orbit captured around the star. And speaking of stars, we are bathed in Aethera's orangey red starlight uh, because it's a red dwarf it kind of emits a peak in its light spectrum in the orange and red part of the visible spectrum so that's what kind of dominates the entire system's orange glow And here we are, just about to capture around Aethera. We've arrived in the system about 10 years after our initial departure from the Kerbal system. 
we're going to be setting Surther as our target, which is the Mercurian uh, lava lake planet. That's the first planet in the Aethera system. We've set Surther as our target and are doing a maneuver to match inclinations with the planet. Once we've matched inclinations with Surther, we'll do a quick maneuver to lower our periapsis on an intercept with the orbit. And those two uh, flyby maneuver nodes will pop up and we'll just make adjustments so that we can get that flyby. So we're at the maneuver node and we're executing the burn now so that we can get a nice encounter with Surther. And another interesting thing to note about the Aethera system is that all of its planets orbit in a retrograde direction. So that's different from the Kerbal system, which orbits in a counterclockwise motion. All the planets orbit in a, that way. Uh, I'm going to be orbiting in the opposite direction because that's just the way that all of the planets do in Aethera. So we're going to be conserving some of that momentum if we just stay on that kind of orbit ourselves. But here we are, just entering the sphere of influence of Surther. We've gotten our first look at the planet from space, and now we're just working on capturing around the planet. It doesn't have any atmosphere and is about half the gravity of Kerbin, and it's a super Mercurian type planet. Orbiting close to its start has these giant expansive lakes of lava within giant craters that may be from volcanic activity or even giant impacts from space. So now that we're captured around the planet, we're going to be adjusting our orbit to about an altitude of 20,000 meters uh, above the surface where we can begin to start our survey of the planet from a closer distance. We have a really cool like panoramic uh, cupola module that we can check out the surface from inside and get some really cool first person views of the surface. We'll switch over to that now where we're one of our Kerbals inside this giant window room here. We can check out this giant lake of lava here that we're just orbiting over to our right. Pretty crazy. You can see some large plumes of smoke or dust or whatever from those volcanoes that I think is a part of the volumetric clouds mod. KSS2 comes with some really great configs for parallax, continued and volumetric clouds to add some really immersive features to these exoplanets that we can explore for ourselves now. Speaking of that, we've got Jeb and Valentina in our first lander, which we've detached from the main starship structure. And we've lit up our engine and are on a deceleration burn to put us on an impact trajectory with the surface. We're going to be aiming to land on the shores of one of these giant lakes of lava in one of these craters. This is the one that we're aiming for. We're going to try to get as close as possible to the lake of lava so that we can, you know, get some accurate studies of the lava from up close. I'm aiming for this little outcrop here um, by the shoreline and I'm coming in uh, still fairly hot. I'm doing a little hop over here to get out of the way of some of these parallax scatter rocks here. And we're landing on a pretty flat spot, so I'm actually really happy with how this landing turned out. And here we are on the volcanic lava lake surface of Surther. We've gotten out of our lander and we're gonna take our first steps on an exoplanet in this series around a red dwarf star. Surther is the closest planet orbiting around the red dwarf Aethera, and uh, we're currently two and a half light years away from Kerbin. So we've crossed an extreme distance just to put boots on the ground on this exotic world. So we could do some science to make it worth our while. You guys can pause to read those if you like, but they essentially talk about how the surface is extremely volcanically active, possibly from impacts in its formation or maybe even more recent impacts. But Valentin is gonna get back in the lander while Jeb goes to plant the flag and take a hike down to the shoreline to check out what the lava looks like from up close just after he's finished planting this flag here on the first exoplanet in the new series, Kerbal Star Frontiers. Anyways, if you guys have been enjoying the video so far, please consider dropping a like and subscribing as I'm trying to get to 10K subscribers by the end of the year. I think that may be a possibility goal and you know statistically like three quarters of you guys aren't subscribed so maybe just hit that down below help me out and we've made it to the shoreline of the lava lake 
people check it out. You can see those magnificent volumetric smoke clouds, or I guess volumetric ash clouds coming out of the lava crater. I guess these craters must be volcanic in some way for them to be outgassing smoke like that. But that was pretty cool. We've basically finished our surface activities on Surther, and now it's time to get back in the lander and start planning our rendezvous back with the KSS Bova in orbit around Surther. The way we'll do this is pack this lander up, we'll stow the ladder and start the engine and wait for the KSS Bova to pass overhead where we'll set it as our target and then we'll use the target node on our nav ball as a guide while we lift off to continue into an orbit that is on an inclination that matches uh, the mothership's orbit around the planet. That'll make rendezvous easier. So I'm trying to circularize at an altitude of like 10,000 meters just to be safe. I'm cutting it really close with the fuel on this thing. Surther has like half the gravity of Kerbin, which is still pretty big for a vacuum moon. So we've uh, had to cut it close with this lander, but we're gonna have enough fuel to circularize for sure, which we've now done. So we're safe for the time being, but now we're working on a, a rendezvous with the mothership. So we're gonna match our inclination even further so we can get an accurate flyby. And once we've done that, we've set it as our target again. And then I'm gonna try to do a quick burn just to get those nodes right on top of each other those flyby nodes and then we will have a separation of under a kilometer and it looks like unfortunately we'll be drifting into view of the starship past the terminator of the planet which is kind of basically like the twilight zone of uh where the sunlight might not sunlight starlight i guess might cut out be obscured by the planet so it might get dark here but there is the mothership just a few meters a few hundred meters away from us we're going to burn towards it and then cancel out our speed on the way back looks like we just missed the horizon blocking the starlight so we're going to have to do a spacewalk over to the mothership and get into one of the ports here on another lander and uh my second kerbal left the engine on in the lander that's actually gonna be helpful in deorbiting the lander onto a crash trajectory onto the planet this craft has a pretty large part count so i'm going to be ditching my landers after i've used them that'll make my game run smoother as the mission runs on but that's about it for today's video guys we successfully landed on an exoplanet in another star system if you guys liked this video make sure to drop a like comment subscribe and stay tuned for more episodes in kerbal star frontiers but yep that's about it for me today i'll see you guys next time